David Gardner, who's the Care Transformation CEO at Intermountain Healthcare with me. Thanks for coming along. Sure. Can you just give us uh, just a brief rundown of the presentation, what you were here to talk about today? Sure. I was here to talk about kind of Intermountain's journey, um, how we've uh, thought about using technology and care delivery over the years, um, kind of where we've come and, and what we've learned and some major choices we've made to kind of get ahead of uh, the market, frankly. We were behind um, and our partnership with Cerner to help us get there, given um, as a provider organization, our, our key competency is delivering care in our community mm -hmm. and not uh, building and um, supplying and supporting software or applications that we, um, that we uh, develop on our own. So that whole transformation has been a large um, change for our organization. And uh, so we've learned a lot about uh, how to think and behave as a system, but also how to align technology in new ways of areas where we were missing, mm -hmm. um, leveraging some kind of the kind of the best in class um, foundational components that we were missing, mm -hmm. uh, and then modifying those to meet our needs from a care delivery perspective, so that it meets Intermountain's model of delivery for our for both our caregivers that are using that technology and then how we interact with our patients and how to share that information with them along their, frankly, over their lifetime. Mm. Yeah, you're obviously, you know, you're saying you're head of a division, Care Transformation. Uh -huh. Where, and it's interesting that you're here obviously at a health technology conference. So yeah. where does technology sit within the organization? Is it something that spans across a variety of things or is it just something that's now integral to all yeah, so Care Transformation actually owns all technology associated with care delivery. Okay. Um, so if you think about all the applications that we use to take care of people, as well as transact certain things like bill or collect payment, et cetera. So clinical, financial, um, uh, tactical around scheduling, et cetera. That's all Care Transformation. Um, and then we include um, the informatics piece, which is kind of knowledgeable about people, process, workflow, expert on application, and then add into that um, uh, intelligence, insights as a service, data, analytics, um, so they understand the entire kind of data life cycle. And then we also have uh, enhanced our approach to program project management, how we prioritize, how we rationalize services and um, Frankly, that's much more of an agile approach now. So all of our work is in an agile inspired um, method. And we align ourselves to the business, to the clinical leadership teams, to understand what are we trying to accomplish. And then we represent the technology um, and modify, adapt, improve, you know, recommend to and deliver the data, et cetera, back um, in a partnering way with the organization, so we're kind of an integrated service as opposed to a separate IS organization where you just give them a, give them a, a list of requirements and they have to they go away and come back. Mm -hmm. It's a little different model. Yeah. And the, you've obviously been on a huge journey and mm -hmm. you did it in a re relatively short amount of time. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the change management, how you approach that and what the acceptance levels are sure. in terms of the new system? Yeah. So. Um, for us, uh, an initiative like putting in a fully integrated EMR on top of a very complex environment that we had in place um, was a lot of, uh, I would say, people and process focus. It's not about technology. It's about what are we trying to accomplish and how do we do our jobs um, as caregivers? How do we transition into new ways of doing those jobs, using enhanced technology to help us do those jobs? And then thinking about how do we allow for people to go through a change and transitions period where they're giving up an old way and moving towards a new way, and how do we support them in that kind of evolution? And different people go through that journey in di at different speeds mm -hmm. and with different uh, attitudes. And how do we best kind of pull together the right support structures, uh, governance teams, decision makers, advocates, et cetera, to help kind of weave together the 
the ability to transition from to do something really hard, which is to have the entire organization over time flipping into a whole brand new ecosystem and do it in a way that actually is purpose driven, mm -hmm. that is aligned to continuous improvement where we're making it better all the time. So the commitment there is providing the the right level of support that's needed from a person to person level. Also having the technology aligned to how we should be providing care. And if it's not aligned, we change it. And then being responsive enough that if there's problems, we're, you know, we're, in, we're empowered to go fix them quickly. And we're not waiting for months for people to kind of languish in this really hard, hard place. Mm. And does that mean that you've had really good pick up and acceptance of people making the choice to use it as opposed to sort of being dictated to Yeah, they have to. So ultimately, we have just shy of 60,000 users that are on it. It's part of their new job. It's just part of their kind of new uh, environment that they live in. And so you can't afford to not use it. In fact, I don't know how you could get away with not using it and be successful because all the pieces work together. And so you can't have an, one person that opts out on their own because it sticks out really quickly mm -hmm. because the nurse or somebody else needs that person's input. input to integrate and coordinate the care. So it, that really never became a problem. And we kind of took best practices from the start and said, this is how you will use it. There's no other option because this is the best way. Mm -hmm. So dynamic dictation. So all of our docs, all of our... Many of our caregivers use uh, dragon mics that are automatically loading. They tell the patient's story while they're with the patient and it automatically documents mm -hmm. into a kind of um, structured um, note and all those. So our documentation rates are probably some of the highest in the country. Yeah. Um, you know, order entry, using order sets, best practice clinical process models, um, you know, putting best. What we like to say is, the, let's make the best way to do the, do the choice or the job the easiest way. So how do we make it easy? Mm -hmm. um, how do we make the quick orders quicker? How do we make you know, the decisions you need to make easier to make? And that's and, helpful. And finally, leading on from that, how important is the role of kind of clinical informatics people or clinical engagement? and ensuring that you are doing things the best way. Yeah, so we're very distributed in the sense that we're not a centralized function that just lives in a central office. We are out there working with care, care teams and how they do their work. So an informaticist, we don't really call them that anymore, but they may be knowledgeable about, they may have a clinical background. They work very closely with care teams to see how the applications are utilized. And we use data and other things to determine how to improve things. And then they're embedded in the care delivery process. So they have an obligation to provide support for improvements and come back with feedback on what's not working and bring that back in. While at the same time, they're empowered to actually go in the system and make some changes themselves. So it's a very much more, I would say, dynamic model around what you would traditionally think as an informatics kind of a role. Mm -hmm. Think of it more as by um, a people process technology data expert. <laughs> that can bring that all together. So yeah. operational knowledge, knowledge about technology, knowledge about what's, what's the outcome we're trying for. If we can do those all together at the same time, that's the right type of person. Great. Well, thank you very much. Sure thing. Time.